Hello. Hello and welcome. So, uh, Max is away. Max is, uh, Max is away from the Court of Swords and, uh, and, and off in vacation town. And so, uh, we were going to go, uh, kind of a long time without any Court of Swords. And that would have been bad because it's boring not playing role-playing games. Playing role-playing games is better than not playing them. And so JP and I had a short conversation day before yesterday uh, and decided that instead of abandoning the Court of Swords for like a full seven weeks, because I'm going to also be on vacation, we didn't want that, um, we decided that we wanted to play some more Court of Swords, but that we wanted to revisit uh, another, another region uh, of the court. We wanted to... Wind that clock back, metaphorically speaking, uh, and uh, and go visit uh, visit the actual Court of Swords again. So what I'm gonna do, because I only have today to prep essentially a, a two session campaign. What I'm gonna do today is uh, sit my butt down in this chair, and you sit your butt down in yours, and we're all going to prepare for a two shot of Court of Swords. Against the Necromancer King. Actually, not against him. They would just get annihilated by the Necromancer King. But but what we're going to do is we're going to return to the Court of Swords after a great deal of time has passed. And we are going to see what uh, is up in the old COS. So I'm going to warn you now. Uh, this, I guess, this uh, episode takes place after... Our gosh, I want to say like episode returns. 40... Welcome home. Of the proper timeline. Uh, let me take a look at my notes here. Do I have it written down? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So this this takes place around episode 40. Um, Gwen, Stovemore, welcome back. Um, so if you're not caught up on Court of Swords, you're probably at risk of being spoiled. Um, if, you, uh, if you are caught up, great. If by some strange curse or miracle you haven't watched any court of swords you are in the wrong place my friend uh i am going to i've probably already spoiled some stuff for you so hello Rylus, welcome back um plug your damn ears or or go away and come back or whatever if you're worried about spoilers uh i'm going to be spoiling the heck out of at least the two shot um probably some other general like stuff if you don't want to be spoiled that's okay you can always come watch this later. Uh, if you're okay with spoilers, or if you are here particularly for that purpose, welcome, welcome, lore nerds. Uh, I am going to need, I'm going to need your help. Uh, we are going to, we're going to do some cool, we're going to do some cool shit today. I'm really excited. So let's set the stage, shall we? Uh, I want to talk about my inspirations. I want to know. Uh, I want to tell you about the the current situation as per the front. Return. Everybody coming back. Welcome, welcome. Come on in. Sit down. It's cool. Um, so uh, we'll talk about the current situation in the Court of Swords as a setting and kind of what's up. So, so my Our dear illustrious friends. champion returns. Hi, K2. Welcome back. Welcome home. So uh, here's the situation. Uh, in the first arc of Court of Swords, uh, we had a group welcome of magistrates. Squad. Yes. Oh, welcome, everybody. Bit ghost. I see a wolf to shot in too. Hi everyone. There you are. Um, in the first season of Court of Swords, our kind of nihilistic preseason, um, we we had a group of magistrates. Now magistrates belong to every court. Every court has them. The Court of Wands, Swords, Cups. Coins, they all have magistrates. Magistrates work for the court. And depending on the court and depending on the magistrate themselves, they might be uh, tax collectors. They might be... Welcome, welcome back, home. March. Uh, they might be uh, problem solvers. They might be... Um, they might be hired killers, right? They, they serve the purposes of the court. Um, now, these magistrates in particular uh, were sent to uh, the Riverlands to investigate some uh, some troubles that had been uh, that had been occurring there, uh, which turned out to be uh, the influence of uh, necromancy. Um, and if you've watched any of the other prep stuff, we know that in the background of all of this, essentially a uh, a soldier had returned from a conflict that the Court of Swords had sort of lost. Um, and returning home with no money and with no uh, no place in society, uh, this poor this poor person uh, had nothing to return to. Uh, and so, being a being a man with nothing, 
um, GameCat, Gwyn. Welcome back. Being a, uh, being a man with nothing, he was a perfect target for the dark entities we call the Mara. So the Mara offered this man power and respect and control of his miserable life. Uh, and so he took it and began to rebuild himself as a bandit lord, uh, as a man with power, and as someone to be respected. And that was like, fuck, like 10 years ago? So, um, yeah, he's like a super powerful undead lord now. Like, he's... He's pretty much, like, I figure if I ever needed, if if by some insane decision, the players end up face-to-face -face with the Necromancer King, he will fuck up their shit. I will pick the most dangerous, most powerful, like, awful undead I can find in the whole book, and I will destroy them with him. Because that's, he, he is, he is incredibly powerful now uh he has had a decade of conflict and bloodshed um to be fully hollowed out and and filled in by the the mighty dark power of the mara he's probably the single most powerful uh semi-mortal servant of the mara uh on on earth like in the world he's incredibly dangerous incredibly powerful and he has been uh he's been at war with the court of swords and they are losing so the Riverlands is uh, predominantly where the Court of Swords gets their um, their their food and their uh, and their their um, workforce from. Right? We've we've talked about the uh, the Court of Swords having kind of returns. further home. upriver, like near the source of the rivers. Um, Hi, Dustin. Up, up near the source of the river, uh, we have the um, the big cities, right? The capital is up there, kind of closer to the mountains, uh, closer to the Court of Coins. And then the further south you go, the more kind of like, I don't want to say savage, but like wild the terrain gets, right? There are lots and lots of rice fields. There are uh, open river. It's actually like quite a beautiful area, lots of valleys and hills. There are some of these like dwarven mountain tribes that have sort of moved out of that area, uh, leaving it open to kobolds and what have you gathering in the mountains but they're not really a problem the magistrates usually wander around you know getting rid of the monsters and keeping it safe but not anymore uh with the loss of the riverlands the court of swords kind of fell into some uh some some very uh bad times uh the uh the court of swords began to uh to starve a little um they had to send their soldiers they had to, to rally the army uh, and send them south, but they have this tenuous alliance. And remember, the Court of Swords are, are the, the aggressive court. They're the court that has been kind of like pushing on the Court of Coins. Uh, we, we saw them. They, they, they have these territorial disputes uh, all over the place. So no one really likes them that much. Thankfully, they have the strongest army in, in the whole world, right? The Court of Swords army is an army bar none, hands down, the best army there is. But now they're all tied up fighting this, this necromancer lord, and no one will help them, right? Like, ladies and gentlemen of the courts, let me take a moment to talk to you about the problem in the Riverlands. Now, if the Court of Swords falls, I promise you that tomorrow the Court of Coins will be next, and it's only a matter of time before this dark army builds themselves boats and sails across the sea. That's right, delegate from the Court of Cups, I'm talking to you. It's only a matter of time. But the problem here is, is that nobody trusts them. There's a tenuous alliance between the courts. And even with the Court of Swords crying, like, we've been at war with the Mara for, like, all this time, nobody really... It's not that they don't care, they just don't see the threat as being a big problem. Um, they're like, well, you've got an army. This is your job. Like, you, we don't call for you to come help us. That's what magistrates are for. Fix the Mara problem, right? Pray harder. So if you're astute, you'll notice the parallels I'm drawing here uh, between both literally the world we've been building, right? The the court, uh, the court of swords is derived from Southeast Asia, and if we think about war in Southeast Asia, we think of one conflict. So 
what I'm drawing on predominantly here, I've got three three main sources for the current situation in Court of Swords. So the three main sources I'm drawing on here are uh, the Abyssals, uh, the Abyssals uh, material from uh, from Exalted. Um, I'm drawing on uh, a series of books called The Black Company, which if you haven't read them, oh my God, they're the best. Uh, so The Black Company, which is a, uh, a, a series of books about uh, martial uh, forces uh, in a fantasy world. Um, it's about mercenaries. It's about the, the grim grittiness of a high fantasy kind of necromancy war, right? So that, and then of course, the, the actual Vietnam War. So let's talk about ways in which this conflict is similar or different from the Vietnam War, right? Because I want to I wanna be clear that it's not exactly the same. There's some stuff in the Vietnam War that, that won't apply here. So, for example, um, in the Vietnam War, uh, media that we would be drawing on, so like Apocalypse, uh, Apocalypse Now, uh, Full Metal Jacket, um, in, in, these, in these pieces of media the protagonists tend not to be the Vietnamese. The protagonists tend to be, uh, they tend to be white Americans, black Americans, the, the American army as a unit. Um, you know, those, those tend to be our protagonists and they are foreigners. Uh, they don't speak the language for the most part. Uh, they're outsiders meddling in another kingdom and we might get there, but we're not there right now. So what we're really looking at is kind of the North, literally like the North Vietnamese, versus the South Vietnamese in this in this situation, um, whereby uh, we don't have external uh, influence yet. Now, that doesn't mean there isn't going to be alienation, right? This is more of a class struggle. This is more the um, the perceived upper classes of the cities, the the rural kind of environment of northern of the northern court of swords versus the uh, or so the urban environment of the north court of swords versus the rural environment of the south. Uh, court of Swords, right? So they're all citizens of the court, but uh, we're looking at some class divides here, the people of the farmlands versus the people of the city. Um, so that's the, the characters here are going to be working for, uh, for the organized armies, right? Uh, now, so that's, that's a difference. Um, another difference here is the ideologies. Now, we know, I guess we don't know, for sure, but we can we can say with a pretty good consistency that the Mara probably don't have humanity as a whole. We probably don't have their best uh, interests in mind. However, like the Necromancer King, uh, the peasants of the Riverlands at this point aren't all being tortured and tormented, right? Certainly some of them are, but there are villages, I'm sure, who are sympathizers to the Necromancer King, right? Because the King is saying like, what good is the Court of Swords done for you, right? His whole agenda is, I suffered. I am of you. I am I am of this land. I am a, a, a man of the, the Riverlands. I went off to war for them, right? We went and fought for the for the the urban elite. We we joined in their conflict to fight the the people of the mountains, right? The mountain tribes. And and we lost, right? This was not a conflict that we won. They treated us like garbage. We came home and they still treat us like garbage. They take our food that we grow for them, right? They, they, they come down here and they, they boss us around with their magistrates. And, and I say no more. I say we take back what's ours and I have the tools to do so. And I, I feel like at this point, you know, six or seven or eight years on, the people of the Riverlands, at least to some degree, have Our gotten okay with the situation Welcome with the Necromancer home. King. We, we have whole villages that are Mara cults. They've abandoned the gods. LZT, welcome back, my friend. So, you know, this this kind of heresy has spread. This isn't just like a bad guy, right? This isn't just like, ooh, scary necromancer. Yes, the necromancer king has the power over life and death. Yes, his servants cannot die. Yes, when you die, you're expected to bequeath your dead to uh to the to the, the army of the necromancer king. But like, dude, things are better now. We keep our we keep our grain. We keep our land. I own this field, not some high lord from the north. So, the situation here is that the necromancer king has this kind of populist agenda, 
that I think has taken taken seed. That I think it's it's the people in the Riverlands have had about a decade to uh, to get okay with this new labor and military force. They they've 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 sort of turned tail in in a lot of ways and retreated from the the social order. I think that the gods have been mostly forgotten. Uh, I think that the um, the the rules of the fountain and what have you have all just been like thrown out the window. So what we're looking at is uh, what we're looking at now is a group of characters. So our, our PCs, uh, as with much good military fiction, uh, a group of PCs who are cut off, uh, who are cut off from their uh, from their unit. Um, their unit has been massacred in some horrible battle, and uh, perhaps, like Velomir, uh, rose from a pile of corpses uh, to survive and to escape. They are deep behind enemy lines in a necromantic wasteland where demons can simply, like, walk the earth. Plus, you know with all this conflict and with the, the fountain's kind of protection failing other mysterious entities have begun to emerge. So I think that things are incredibly dangerous. Uh, I think that I want to create a situation in which death is around every corner. Uh, I want to lean into the fact that like they're in a jungle in the middle of the season of fire. They're cut off from the supply lines and things are not, good right like this is not okay um brewer welcome back thank you um right like they're in the middle of a, a sort of a, an unofficial war uh shit is a returns. mess welcome home <laughs> hey eric welcome back so yeah uh so let's let's talk about what i can do here I kind of, I kind of like the idea. I don't know if y'all have seen this, but one of my favorite movies uh, is a movie called The Warriors. Um, I really like it. It's a great, it's a great kind of quest movie. Um, it's based on, it's based on Greek myth, and I can never remember which. Um, right, it's based on uh, Anabasis. It's based on yeah, Xenophon's Anabasis. So. The idea of the warriors. So here's here's the thing in the warriors, and we're gonna we're gonna kind of lean into this one a little bit. So the thing about the warriors is that it's about a group of uh, of dudes. It's the the warriors, about a gang who is deep in enemy territory, and they have to make it home. And everybody's trying to kill them, right? So what I what I want to do is I want to set up like shit is the worst, right? Like you you and we'll probably make a uh, we'll probably make a, a like a custom move, like a, a love letter. I don't know if love letter is a fair term to call it, but we'll probably have each of them roll uh, on a on a love letter, right? Uh, one for a bard, one for a monk, and one for uh, one for a wizard, and we'll have them roll uh, and do these love letters, and then we'll tell them like, okay, so everything is the worst, uh, shit is terrible. Uh, you've you've just lost a horrible battle with the necromancer king. Somehow you survived. Um, a despair letter exactly and uh yeah and then this is what you've got uh and and these will be avoiding the punitive aspects right these will not be good these will be like pick the things that didn't happen to you we'll see what's left right you don't have any food uh you didn't get sick uh you didn't uh like no one no one is following you right and so we'll we'll give them we'll give them the opportunity to establish their own baseline and then all i have to do is just put shit in the way of them getting safely home now what i'm going to do at the end because i'm i'm cruel this way um is that i'm going to give them an opportunity hopefully again prep it can only go so far before players ruin it and tear it apart um slightly obscene welcome back um what i want to do is give them an opportunity and to strike back to say okay here you go. You can leave. However, here's an opportunity to take out like a lieutenant of the necromancer king. If you do, you give up your chance to go home forever. Right? Who wants to be immortal? So that's that's going to be a thing that will come up near the end. Um, people have already started uh, mentioning in chat something that I've been thinking about. 
I feel like if she's going to come back, you know it's going to be Twee. So Twee very well might be uh, making an appearance. Uh, I mean, I think we all know she didn't die. I think we all know she's too tough to die. She's too cool to live, too tough to die. And I feel like maybe she's been like part of a, a Riverlands resistance with her band of kobolds. I think she's like Twee the Kobold Queen. Um, yeah, I think grown-up Twee ha has, has like... Yeah, ra rallied a, a tribe of kobolds up in the mountains and something like that. We'll we'll work it out. So these these kinds of things, like these sorts of adventures, they're they're fairly limited in the sense that I can right exactly. She's like Colonel Twee. <laughs> um, the the thing here i guess is uh is that it it's it's sort of linear in the sense that all all they all they want to do is get home so they know their goal i can say your uh you know your your you're six weeks out from home, marching along the road. the roads however, are completely controlled by the forces of the necromancer king you're deep in the shit. you know that north is where safety is and death is all around you. What do you do? So what I have to do is just come up with some like modular encounters, some stuff that they can run into, uh, and that should be fairly easy. But let's let's begin, let's begin at the beginning, uh, and let's start making some notes about how things went wrong. Um, I don't want to look at this like heinous white background, so I'm gonna make it dark gray. All right, let's pop over to roll twenty, and we'll we'll get this shit set up. So, um, let's go ahead and we'll write some, we'll write some love letters, shall we? All right. Ew, Ariel, no. No. You're a great princess in a terrible font. These are all terrible fonts. Dear Roll20, give me some better fonts. Okay. All right. Uh, Alaska Winter, welcome back. Dear Bard, and then I'm going to copy this, and we're going to make another one, and it be Dear Monk, and we're going to make another one, and we're going to call it Dear Wizard, because I don't know their names. Okay, so, uh, Dear dear Bard, um, basically what, what's happened here is that, what do we think, like, the... They've, they've lost a battle, or they got cut off. I feel like they lost the battle. I think it's like like there was a slaughter. Um, I feel I feel pretty good about that. Um, the bard is Anne, the monk is JP, and the wizard is uh, is Dan. Um, yeah, they made they made these characters. I'll have to like if we end up getting a guest, I'll have to write another quick one. But um, let's see. Okay, so dear bard, uh, your unit has been dismembered. Just another in a long list of horrible losses against the Necromancer King. How did you manage to survive? Tell us about that, and then roll 2d6 plus one. On a 10 plus, choose two. On a seven, I'm gonna make this. I need to make this smaller. Seven or nine, choose one. On a miss, all three are true. Sorry, friend. That's how it goes. Boop. Okay. Yeah, let's make this size 40 or even size 32. Yeah, that'll be fine. Okay. So I'm going to get, I'll get Anne to say like, all right, so the Necromancer King tore your unit apart. It was horrible. Uh, you survived though. How? How did you survive? Cowardice? Bravery? What's your deal? Um, so these are three bad things and I'm going to force them to choose. Yeah, exactly. Choose exactly. On a 10 plus, you only have to choose, or sorry, this should be one and that should be two. There we go. There we go. So three bad things. Um... So let's see, uh, you got a bad wound that just won't heal. 
Um, you saw something in the battle that you can't shake. You're haunted by it. Uh, and then you lost. Um, I want to. I'm tempted to take away a weapon or armor or something, but this is the thing. This is a very. This is a bad move. You have to make this move, and like just bad shit occurs, and you have to pick one. Um, but if if you fail this move, all three are true. Um, so you got a bad one that won't heal. You saw something about it. You can't shake. You're haunted by it. Um, And then, oh yeah, don't worry. We'll we'll do the we'll do the mangling later. Uh, and then this last one, um, all you've got is your weapon and your armor. You lost everything else. There we go. So this way, this makes it a hard choice because if you want to keep all your gear besides your weapon and armor, you have to take a bad wound or you're haunted by something terrible. Um, yeah, there we go. Okay, cool. Um, all right, so that's 32. Let's go with the wizard here. Uh, no, I mean, a bard can, a bard can, uh, a bard can sing. A bard can sing magic. Um, right? You don't need an instrument. Oh, you, do you have to have an instrument focus? All right, and your instrument. Precious instrument. You big fucking baby. That's dumb. Okay. All right. Okay. Dear wizard. In this hellscape, it feels like the fountain. Fountain's running red with blood. The presence of the Mara are everywhere. Fucking with... Fucking with your magic. Your unit all died and you're, you're in the deep shit now. Roll 2d6 plus 1 and we'll see just how screwed you are. On a 10 plus, choose 1. On a 7 and 9, choose 2. On a miss, it's a bad hand across the table. They're all true. All right, so for the wizard, um, I think for the wizard, uh, your magic is unpredictable, warped by the demon taint of this horrible battlefield which you know I'm going to have some fun with <laughs> um okay uh you've managed to attract the attention of some particular specific demonic force Returned. Uh, and then, uh, lastly, um, hmm, 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 hmm. Workless Gamer, welcome back. Uh, let's see. What else can we do? Uh, magic is unpredictable. Warp of the demon taint. You manage to attract the attention of some specific demon force. Um, and then... Something, yeah, something about like, um, like a, a soul wound. Um, an enemy spellcaster left you with a deep wound in your soul. So that's great. There we go. I like it. Okay, some kind of like, so the taint is either, basically, Dan is going to have to choose either my magic is, is warped somehow, uh, there's a demon following us, or uh, I've been like soul wounded, and now it's it's in me. Yeah, the Morgul blade. Exactly. Cool. Okay. All right. So, dear monk, this 
they promised you that you'd make a difference here, that the Riverlands were overrun, and that the people would welcome you as saviors. Sadly, in the jungle, this proved to be just another lie. Roll 2d6 plus 1. So we can find out what's what. You have returned. Um, I don't want these to be mechanical effects. I don't want any of these to be like minus one, whatever, any of that stuff. Um, on a 10 plus, choose one. On a seven to nine, choose two. On a miss. The gods have left you to your own devices here in hell. It's all true, and it's all bad. Okay, so in the battle that cost you your unit, uh, no, here, here we go. The battle, the battle cost you more than your unit. Uh, let's see. Should we should we take an arm? I mean, it's not gonna affect them mechanically, but like, you know, you've recently lost a limb, <laughs> so they took a limb or an eye, a limb or an eye. You pick. Okay, there we go. Um. I don't I, I don't care if the rules say that you that your unarmed attack is affected, you can punch and kick or you can punch and headbutt. It's it's fine. You don't need both arms. Um Okay. Uh and then um You forgot to read your fortunes before you set out. The gods are looking elsewhere. And won't come to your. Those are looking elsewhere today. So this this one is serious. If if they if the monk t takes this one, um, they didn't get a fortune, and they're they're essentially like cursed by the gods. This means that they are they are open to the Mara's influence, and the gods will not the gods will not protect or help them at all. Like it's just not it's just not a thing. Um, this is beyond the shadow of the tower because the tower is like God-given bad luck, right? It's it's okay to have bad luck because the tower is still, it's still real. It's still like a thing. Um, this is way this is way outside all that shit. This is worse. Um, okay, and then uh, lastly, let's see. Um, oh, I know. Uh, someone. Someone knows you're still alive, and word is getting around that your company has survivors. Hunters are surely on the way. Well, if JP is using a two-handed weapon, he's going to have to not pick the limb, right? Right. So there you go. It's on, it's on them. It's not my problem. I just offered them the horrible shit that might happen. Uh, so this is great. This will set up all kinds of like fucked up shit that could occur. Uh, we may end up with a wizard tainted by demon power, uh, attracting the attention of demonic forces and left with a deep soul wound. We might have a bard with a bad wound that won't heal, PTSD, and, uh, no equipment. Uh, and then we might have a monk with, uh, a missing eye, uh, cursed by the gods or forgotten by the gods. And then, uh, uh, hunted by, by the, the, the units of the, of the necromancer king. Right. So bad shit all around. And that's the point. Uh, I'm not, this is court of swords, my friends. I'm not going easy on them. Come on. Come on now. Uh, so anyway, uh, this is where we begin. So we're going to start with these, these questions. Um, Let's here. I'm gonna extend this map out a little bit so I can continue to uh, so I continue to write. 
Uh, and let's let's scroll on down. So let's talk about some ideas for encounters. So encounter encounters on the way home. All right. I guess we could talk about like your premise. The characters are the last surviving mm, sur surviving surviving members of the. We need a unit n name here. The Hmm. Like fangs of like the basically they're just like they're uh they're a there's a, a fighting unit that that has been just like taken apart yeah like <laughs> the expendables yeah uh they're good and they're the good guys right so like yeah yeah let's see. Um, let's see, the 25th Infantry Legion of the Court of Swords, and they have a name. Let's see, the 25th Infantry Legion of the Court of Swords, the Blades of, the Blades of Heaven, or something like that, like the, the White Blades of Heaven. Yeah, because they're, they're, like, good guys, right? Uh, so maybe they all have these, like, blade tattoos uh, or something. Um, and, uh, yeah, and so they're the last surviving members. Uh, the unit was massacred in a battle against the forces of the Necromancer King deep in the Riverlands. It is the depths of the Season of Fire which means impenetrable heat, terrible humidity, mosquitoes, sickness, and damp. Ugh, blech. Okay. Um, all that remains is to make the long, hard march home to the forward base in the north. Several weeks travel through hostile territory, hostile territory, and dangerous terrain. Um, the forward base in the north uh, is going to be called, let's see, uh, let's see here. Let's see, how do we pronounce this word? Tương Thành. Tung Tang. All right. It means, here it is, Tung Tang. Uh, it, it's Vietnamese for stalwart wall. Uh, or, or maybe literally, uh, yeah, strong wall. Yeah. I'm into it. All right. Tung Tang. Uh, and that's, uh, that's where they're headed back. Uh, to the base, and yeah, it's just gonna be real. So uh, we gotta figure out now some some encounters that might happen along the way. Um, so let's work that out. Um, tropes, tropes of war. All right, what is some shit that they could encounter? Um, let's see. Uh, mercenary freebooters taking advantage of the war, right? So that's a thing. Like a band of like kind of neutral freebooters. I love, I love, love the idea of like neutral, yeah, like brigands who are like, oh, yeah, war, huh? Let's go check that shit out. And they're like basically like marauding. Um, they're enemies of everyone. They're a, a commando unit. Um, okay, uh, let's see, uh, corpse harvesters 
of the Necro King gathering dead from a battle. Uh, we could have a supposedly friendly village that turns out to be a fucking trap. Because part of one of the one of the big memes is the like, oh yeah, welcome to the village. Like, of course we uh, court of the court of swords. Like, thank God you're here. And then while they're sleeping, they poison them or they they yeah bad bad shit right. Um, let's say uh, an ambush along the road or encounter with the forces of the necromancer. Um, we could also have like, um, let's see, uh, a defiled temple or group of monks, priests who have lost their faith. Um, Let's see, a literal fucking demon spawned from a corpse pit. Like, we can literally have demons. Demons can just walk around in this area now because there's nobody to stop them. Um, an opportunity to kill someone important to the Necromancer King. Um... Let's see, a group of defectors from the Court of Swords army, right? Dudes who are like, yeah, we're, we're on your side. But secretly, they're like, we're going to kill you. Every, everything needs to be a threat. Literally everything, right? The things that are safe need to be poisoned or fucked up or a trap in some way. Um, nothing good can happen to the players. I will not hand them anything. Everything they get... They need to to dig up from the filthy ground themselves. Um, my job here is to make this war seem like hell. I want them to feel like they are in hell and they have died and that everything is the worst, but that it's their opportunity, it is their job to drag themselves bloody and screaming from the pits of hell. That is what I want. Everything they earn... Needs to come from their own sweat, blood, and tears. So, uh, let's see. Like, this is already, like, a ton of shit. Um, hmm. Okay, we talked about before uh, a local uh, who survived, who survives outside the villages leading a band of resistance fighter. This is Twee, right? Twee. Twee and her cadre of mountain kobolds. Now she she hates the magistrates, remember? They they fucked this up. So so Twee is not Twee is not gonna be their friend. They might temporarily befriend her. Uh, they might they might whatever work with her for a time, but she has not got the same priority. She hates the army of the Court of Swords just as much as she hates the Necromancer King because they haven't done anything good for her either. Um, her brother is dead. It's a bad scene. She's pissed. Um, now she she has faith, right? She hasn't lost that faith, and so she uh, she is not turned to the Mara, but. Uh, yeah, she's she's about that shit. Um, ooh, ooh, I know. One other encounter we might have is uh, an elven colonization force uh, drawn here, given access to the world by way of the barrier of the fountain thinning due to the Mara, etc. So when I say colonization force, I mean like, uh, you know, like um, a hexagrammatical vessel pod thing plus maybe like three elves. Not like not like an army, but like a group of, of these sort of alien uh, elves who basically get access to the world because the world is protected by the fountain. The fountain's barrier is thinning here because people's faith is failing. Uh, and the Mara have started to like dig at the shield, and now these these elves from from outside can get they can get access to the uh, to the world. Um, 
So yeah, look at all these things that we can, look at all these cool things that we can have. Return. Um, Peluche, welcome back. Yeah, scouting UFO, <laughs> exactly. All right, cool. So look at all this good shit. Um, I don't, I don't even know where to begin. Like, this is the trick with D and D. If 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 we were playing like Dungeon World, I'd be basically done by now. I'd make up some custom moves for this shit and we'd be ready to go. But because it's D and D, I have to do all the like map stuff now. So I gotta find. I guess let's here let's um let's make a new map uh so this is letters and notes necro king letters and notes all right okay uh and let's add another page and we'll just make this one like a generic swamp because i'm probably gonna need a swamp map um Oh, did, did that not save? You can do it, Adam. There we go. Okay. Let's look at let's look at the let's look at the marketplace. Let's see what kind of swampy swamps we have. Um there we go. Yeah, we need a village, some roads, a couple of landscapes. Uh, I'm not too worried about it. I think we can find some cool shit. Um, let me set this to maps. Uh, I remember using lots. Of, there's lots of good swamps from the other, the other stuff. So just let this load up. It takes a little while longer than usual because uh, I have access to like all of the. Yeah, here we go all the maps uh okay let's let's take a look this is a little stuff i got encounter swamp this is a new one i don't think i've seen this one yet this is uh significant maps let's take a look at this swampy business again my my roll 20 ironically is a little slower than everybody else is gonna be yeah like it's the black dragon thing from from ddx 1.6 <laughs> Oh, that's cool. That's a cool swamp. Yeah, let's use this one. Um, I want to make it bigger than this, though. I want to make this like a... I don't like these 25 by 25. I want to make them like 40 by 40. Because these, these ones tend to be pretty high res and scale pretty good. So, All right. Here is a generic swamp. Boop. You're a swamp now. Um, and thankfully... Oh, it's got its own... Damn it! People who make marketplace maps don't... Don't put the grid on them. I have a grid already. Don't do it. I don't I don't like it. Okay, here we go. Why you do this? Clean maps, please. Thank you. <laughs> there we go. Okay. Layer. GM layer. Nope. I want on my map. Oh, I was already putting it on the map. Okay. Good. Get back to the map layer then. There we go. All right, so this is one that we can use. We can have this one as a like a generic like tracking through the swamp situation. I can drop any kind of monster I want in here. Um, let's do, uh, let's see, generic swamp two. I might as well get a couple ready, right? Make this guy 40 by 40 again. Yeah, right, like pre pre-baked squares. Not, not so much. <laughs> Roll for random ogre in the swamp. We don't have time for joke encounters. I don't have time. Seriously, it's I really don't. Um, we we have we have too much to do. Oh, that's cool. Some little bridges across this like swamp to make it an undead ogre. Right. Sure. There we go. Okay, so these generic swamps I can use to fill pretty much like mercenary freebooters, corpse harvester of the Necro King. Um, ah, I need like a road. I need like a swamp road. Oh my god, an ogre eating a donkey. That's kind of cute, actually.
Yeah, I mean, the best they're going to get is, like, neutral encounters, right? Like, if they meet uh, some merchants in the swamp, the merchants are going to be not inherently particularly friendly. Um, okay, did I bump this one already? No. I like bigger maps. It gives us more room to, to flop around. And then that way that we have less of a chance of the players being like, I'm going to leave the map. Now, if you've watched me prep this, uh, this kind of thing before, you'll, you'll notice that I'm like, I'm not big on like large maps. Like I don't super care about, I don't super care about like, um, big overland maps. I tend to think in terms of how, how far things are from one another. Oh shit. Yeah. Look at that. That is cursed as fuck. Oh yeah. Look at that. That is a cursed image for sure. All right. We're going to use this fell swamp. This is where the like demon shit's going to happen. Cursed as fuck. All right. So this is the QECU or QECW drowning pond. Yeah. Look at these. These are fetid pools, fetid pools. All right. So this is not a generic swamp. This is like a demon swamp. This is some fell shit. Okay, here we go. A little fell swamp. What other cool mappy shit can we do? Um, am I looking at just tokens and maps? Yeah, just maps and tiles. Okay. It's for making my own overland map. Uh, a little underground. I don't want to put in a dungeon because God knows how long dungeons take now. At level five, like a whole dungeon would take up. the entire two sessions now i could build i could build my own like custom maps but i don't i like i love the stuff that i have access to already and i don't feel the need to customize this kind of stuff um let's see so these are all like nighttime maps let's do a camp let's do a camp map so we'll do one with the dynamic lighting um this one's like oh that's that's like a force for tile okay i need to i need to get one that's like darker and we'll just create um we'll just create a, a little like campfire uh area yeah like i'd customize if i was making a dungeon or something you know like i here i'll show you i did a i did a custom one um like the sunken ziggurat back way way back at the beginning um Right, like I, I put this this ziggurat map together. This was gonna originally be the the layer of the necromancer king, right? So this this was gonna be this was gonna be like a little dungeon where they where they fought. So you you can even you can even see them. Look who it is. What's up, Baron? You're dead. You're fucking dead. You're dead. It's cool. It's cool. I can always use these again. But yeah, I've like I've definitely done I've definitely done that stuff in the uh, in the past. I just haven't uh, I haven't felt the need of late uh, okay so anyway where are we we're gonna do a little camp we're gonna do like a nighttime kind of camp map I love like flooded forests and swamps I love that stuff it's so cool okay here we go Lily pad mire. Oh, this seems neat. Let's take a look at this thing. What do you look like at full size? What is that? Oh, it's a hut. Oh, that's kind of cool. I don't really need a hut in there though. Let's see what else we got. Yeah, these are kind of wetlands. Hmm. <laughs> you don't need a hut, or do you? How about this one? What's this? This is like a big tree. That's kind of cool. Yeah. All right. Let's use this one. Um, I'm gonna blow it up though. Uh, hold on. Does that make this bridge really long? How how long is this bridge now? Jesus, it's a 30-foot wide bridge. I don't know. Fuck it. Why not? 
Big ass tree. 45 foot tree. Okay, so for this map, we want this to be a night map. Uh, so this is gonna, I'm gonna make a note on here. So night. Say night map. Oop. And this is camp. I think I'm actually gonna make it slightly smaller. Bring this back down. We'll do it 30 by 30. There we go. And then I gotta shrink. Ah, no. Oh God, what have I done? There we go. Okay. All right. And then I need to turn on, oops, hold on. Uh, turn on the, uh... now this can serve as either their camp or the camp of someone else. And I can enable dynamic lighting. Um, we won't restrict movement. There we go. Yeah, that's better. Okay. Uh, and then I got to drop in a campfire. So let's go search for that. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Look at all these little campfires I could use. How cute. Look at that. Adorable. Little pixel fire. Um, I just need a regular lit campfire. It's lit, fam. Okay. And then, okay, here's a, here's a question for you. Uh, campfire, D and D. How much how much does a campfire in fifth edition? How much light does it shed? 60, 50, 30, 100? Light? It's 30 feet? 30, 30, right? Yeah, it's 60, 30, I think. So all players see it. 60 starts at, starts at 30, yep. Okay, nobody sees its name or its bar or its aura, but everyone will see its light. There we go, all right, wicked. Okay, so there's a little camp map. Nope. Um, and I should be able, I think, to drop this to the map layer without... Yeah, there we go, without killing the light. Okay, so this is a little campfire. Um, is everybody in the party... I didn't I didn't catch this part when I was watching the video. Is everybody in the party human? Let me look at their character sheets. Human. Human. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, no dark vision at all. Ah, ha, 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 ha. <laughs> Fantastic. All right, cool. Um, so there's a little campfire. We got some swamps. Um, let's put together some encounters. Um, let's put together some encounters. So I need uh, mercenary freebooters. Can I save encounters here? Oh, I totally can. Dope. All right, I'm gonna write them down anyway. Um, so this is uh, Kobold Fight Club. Big ups to Kobold Fight Club for this bad action. Um, you're the best. Thank you so much, Kobold Fight Club. All right, so we need some mercenaries. Some mercenaries are gonna be humans. They're gonna be accompanied by some undead. Um, medium encounter my ass. And they're three level fives. So let's begin with the humans that lead the undead. So let's go humanoids. And let's start with, oh, can I just have humans? Ugh, I can't. Shit, all right. Well, that's fine. Uh, yeah, there's no like people. And I can have any max or any min. Um, any alignment, energy. Okay, all right. Yeah, and if they get another player, obviously I'll come in and fuck with these. But so I want these to be human. Yeah, I can set them. Oh, and these are mercenaries, so they're not. They don't have undead with them. These are just going to be human. So 
They might have monsters. Our illustrious champion returns. Let's check an Welcome archer home. and a knight. Hey, nerdy ninja. Welcome back. And I can always recolor these, right? Like an orc doesn't have to be an orc. An orc can be like a an, a human, right? The orc, the orc can be just a human warrior. I can just mess with a couple of little things. Um, okay, so let's say a knight and an archer. And this is medium so far. Throw in like an apprentice wizard. I still got lots of XP to go. All right. And then, like, maybe it's just some, some goons. So, like, some bandits. There. <laughs> that seems right. Um, but I could also... I don't know. What else is fun? What else goes well with these dudes? Because, like, these bandits will just die right away. The the joke... The, the, the trick here will be telling the archer from the bandit, right? Telling the wizard from the archer and the bandit. Like, I'll make it so they're all kind of similar looking. Um, so the players don't know what's what. Um, the problem, see, this is the problem with like building encounters the way that, that the game does like, oh my God, I could be such an asshole. Oh my God. I could make them wear rats. Oh fuck. That's even better. Oh my God. Oh, I love it. Oh my God. I'm the worst. Oh my God. I'm the worst. I'm the fucking worst. Four were rats. Done. Fucking done deal. Done. Finished. Finito. Four were rats. That's the mercenary encounter. The worst. All right. Cool. Four were rats. Okay. Uh, I don't have to do all of these, but that's great. So some some were rats picking over the the corpses. Um. The reason why were rats are the worst is let's let's take a look at were rats, shall we? Shall we shall we together have a look at were rats? So here's a were rat. The little ratty rat man. Come on, were rats. Give me my give me my shit. I think I clicked it before it was done loading. Uh let's see here. Right, you can't exactly. They're not they're they're not mean they're not scared of getting sick because they're already they're already disgusting rat man. There he is. Look at him. Look at that little fucker. Uh, so the thing about were rats is they have lycanthropy, um, which is great. They can shapeshift into giant rats. So, of course, they're picking through garbage. Um, what I'm excited about is this shit. Bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing from non-magical attacks not made with silver weapons. So they're just going to be attacking some bandits. So if the characters act like D&D characters and they pick fights with these first mercenary freebooters... Then, yeah, I'm not. This wouldn't be the first encounter because that would be like three in a row. Um, but yeah, uh, so again, I don't care if they win these fights. That's not my fucking job. My job here is not to give them fights they can win. My job is to make the game interesting and drop stuff like this into the uh, into the situation. So what'll be fun is them picking this fight when they shouldn't. Uh, the mercenaries are not going to pick a fight. Where rats are cowards, right? Where at the where rats are going to be like you should just move along, right? You should get out of here, you should move along, go on your way, like fuck off. The players will be like, "Man, we're PCs. Fuck you. There's only four of you. I'm going to pick a fight with you." Then they're going to shoot them and stab them and then the where rats are going to be like you hecked up you hecked up, fam, and they're going to mess them up. So the idea here is the encounter isn't just about, like, a, a fight to fight. The encounter is about saying something about the scenario. So these characters are here to show that, like, monsters have come to dig through the, the ruins and that you shouldn't pick fights with people just because you think you're tougher than them. Um, yeah. Four rare rats. Picking... Through the rubble. Or, I don't know, like, being awful to some peasants. Being awful. Because they're like nasty, disgusting rats. They're rat men. All right. Oh, do we have a, do we have a fourth player? Did JP just announce we have our fourth? Okay. Uh, yes. All right. 
So I need to I need to balance this for four. Okay. Let's see here. Uh, so yeah, Ken Ken's gonna join us. So that's cool. Which means I now have more budget. So now f fuck it. It's it's five wear rats now. <laughs> fuck it then. All right. Five five wear rats. Excellent. More delightful wear rats. Okay, perfect. So we got some wear rats. Uh, let's see. Um, let's come up with like a generic kind of undead encounter. Uh, like so, just servants of the Necro King gathering the gathering the dead. So let's see. Um, now I want undead. I want nasty, nasty undead. Any size. Undead. Oh, there you go. Fuck it, it's CR23 Demulich. Uh, and let's say... Man, there's so much good shit that I'm not... I don't have the budget for. Our illustrious champion A Bodak? Returns. Some wraiths? Welcome home. What's good in my mid-space? Hey, Finian, welcome back. Uh, how many whites can I throw? Uh, you have returned. Let's see, two, two whites... Zanakai, welcome back. Uh, yeah, like a bunch of cultists and shit, like humans. <laughs> 24 shadows. Um, see, I need like an intelligent undead that commands them. Um, so the problem is there's a big jump, right? Like there's not really any good intelligent undead. Maybe a revenant. Let's look at what revenants are about. Aren't revenants just like hunters, though? Like, yeah, the soul of a mortal met a cruel and undeserving fate. Uh, you have returned. Yeah, hunger for revenge. They have only one year, so it'd be like a dead soldier. Revenants with spells and weapons. Yeah, we'd have to make a PC. But it's not really about revenge. Yeah, I don't, I don't like that one. That's a shame. Uh, it's a cool idea, but I don't think it fits. Uh, let's look at Wraith. What do Wraiths do? Undead Commanders. Oh, perfect. Perfect. Okay, great. Let's do that. Wraith, Wraith, Wraith. Where are you, Wraiths? Bam. Okay. A Wraith. Uh, and then some Spectres. What? I only get two of them. This is horse shit. Um, I don't know, like a bunch of Zambos? I mean, I could just be like... Yeah, see, like, one Wraith and then, like, any amount of anything it immediately just... This is why we do Deadly Encounters, because... I guess I could do like six. No, it's still too much. Three and two. A wraith, three zombies and two skeletons. Like, I feel like this is way too easy an encounter. Like, I feel like they would just kick the shit out of them. So let's let's see what else we can do here. Oh yeah, the wraith, the wraith, yeah, the wraith would just like hang out in the back. Oh! Ooh! Oh! Oh, fuck! I have an idea. I have an idea. Hold on. Hold the fucking phone. Where's that? Where's that wraith at? Well, we don't know they don't have a cleric, right? I, I have to assume... What is... Okay, let me look at the Wraith here. So the Wraith has life drain. The Wraith is resistant to non-magical bullshit. Immune to a bunch of stuff. We don't know. We might have a cleric. Does life drain. It creates a specter. Oh! Oh! Oh, fuck! Yes, of course. This is the corpse collector, right? So he's out here fucking conjuring... Ah, oh, yes. So I can just make specters as much as I want. Oh, that's perfect. Ah, oh, ah. Oh. Hmm. Oh, it's hot. It's hot shit. All right. So it's fine. A wraith, and then we're gonna surround the wraith with like skeletons. So let's let's throw in like uh, here. Let's throw in a bunch of skeletons. Uh, and then some zombies. And then, yeah, and then they're just there to protect the, the, the wraith while the wraith makes specters. 
And we'll just get a new Spectre every turn. Oh my god, it'll be perfect. All right. So let me here. Let's make this one, like, actually a hard encounter. All right. Two skeleton archers. Uh, three zombies that are just, like, lifting up bodies. And then a wraith who can just be like, Spectre, 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 give it to me. Go get them. Oh, well, it's going to be hot. It's going to be hot shit. Because if you look at it, uh, how often how often can the wraith do this? The wraith can, uh, I believe, as an action, target a humanoid within 10 feet. Oh, that's been dead for no longer than a minute. So it's got to be right at the end of a battle. Uh, and it can only control one at a time. Uh, no, sorry, no more than seven. All right, so it maxes out at seven. So this would be like they, they've walked into an execution field. Oh, we're going to have to make a map for this one. Oh, this is nasty. Okay, so this is a, uh, a specter. A specter and, yeah, human prisoners being being murdered. Okay, dope. Uh, a specter and some zombies and skeletons. And this is not going to be gathering dead from a battle. This is going to be executing victims. So these are all prisoners. Making specters. Yes. Oh, it's disgusting. Sick. Okay, I need to uh, I need to make a horrible I need to make a horrible Oh did I say yeah Spectre no, that's a Wraith. Wraith Okay Alright so uh, this is the uh, Wraith uh, Wraith times one three Zambos two skeletons and then just like a shit ton of corpses uh cool yeah you can do it you can save some people who survive some other soldiers yay don't worry about it it's gonna be fine uh so i need i need like a uh battlefield map maybe let's see if there's like a bloody battlefield 